Acts chapter 8. I'm going to be real honest with you. I was looking at something in the first part of this chapter, and God burned my heart for something toward the end. And we'll begin reading in verse number 26. The Bible says, And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise, and go toward the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, um, a eunuch of great authority, under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure, had come to Jerusalem for to worship, was returning, and sitting in his chariot, read Isaiah, it says Isaiah, but uh, the Hebrew, Isaiah, the prophet. Then the Spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him, and heard him read the prophet Isaiah, and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. The place of the scripture which he read was this, He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb dumb before a shearer, so opened he not his mouth. In his humiliation his judgment was taken away, and who shall declare his generation, for his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee of whom speakest the prophet of this, of himself? or of some other man. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And as they went on their way, there came unto, uh, they came unto a certain water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, Thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is uh, the Son of God. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you, Lord, for the good singing. Thank you for the good congregational singing, the good choir singing. Lord, thank you for the good special singing. Father, thank you for, Lord, the report of the three precious souls saved at the jail this morning. God, I hate they're there. I hate that circumstances of life had them to end up there. But, Lord, I'm glad while they were there, we had an open door to preach the truth to them. And God, I'm th glad that three of them got born again. Thank you for that, Father. Lord, thank you for a good Sunday school hour. And God, thank you, Lord, for the Word of God. I pray for the next few minutes, Lord, you'd arrange the atmosphere around here. I pray the sweet Holy Ghost of God would not be grieved or quenched but would be allowed to do his office work, speak to our hearts. I pray you'd send revival to the saints of God this day. I pray that we'd all draw nigh to God, that he might draw nigh to us. Then, God, I pray if there be any in our midst today, and Lord, you know every heart, there be any in our midst today that does not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. I pray today that, Lord, the sweet Holy Spirit, through cords of love, would uh, woo them and show them their need of a Savior. I pray that, Lord, they trust Christ before it's everlasting too late. Now, Father, help us. We need your help. Without you, we can do nothing. Now, Lord, I pray for our special prayer request. I do pray for Miss Lexi. You touch her and help her. I pray for Miss Sherry. I pray for Brother Bob. I pray for Miss Marcy. I know, all, Lord, they'd all love to be here this morning. Help them. Uh, Lord, we are thankful you've helped uh, Miss Kathy. It's good to see her. And, God, I pray you'd continue to touch her and strengthen her. Lord, I pray for uh, uh, the colonel the same. You touch him and help him. I pray for Brother Ed Pierce. You touch him and, Lord, touch his body. I do pray for Brother Tony and his family. You would comfort them in their hour of grief. Uh, and I pray for any and Brother Tony's family that aren't saved. Lord, they'd come to trust in Christ. Uh, Father, help us now. Bless as only you can. Use this unworthy vessel. And Father, we'll not fail to bless you for all that you do. For it's in the wonderful and holy and glorious name, the Lord Jesus, we ask these things. Uh, amen. Amen. I want to draw your attention to a couple things uh, in this text. First of all, I want you to notice that this eunuch was a dedicated servant. In verse number 27, it says that he was a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, uh, 
who had charge of all her treasure, uh, and he had come to Jerusalem for to worship. This man is a dedicated servant. This man is a high servant to the queen of Ethiopia. He has gained so much respect uh, and so much renown uh, that he is the keeper of all of her treasure. Uh, now listen, uh, I don't know how much treasure she had, uh, but he was in charge of all of it. Uh, he is dedicated uh, uh, to his position and to his job and to the authority that has been granted him. Uh, we see he is a dedicated servant. Uh, but can I say, uh, with all that prestige, with all that authority, with uh, all those others that would love to have his job, something was missing in his life. Uh, Notice, if you will, he's not only a dedicated servant, uh, but he's desirous of salvation. Uh, look, if you will, at verse number 28. Uh, he was returning uh, 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 from Jerusalem for the worship in verse uh, uh, 29. And while he's uh, there, he was returning and sitting in his chariot, and he's reading Isaiah the prophet. Uh, Brother Ray, why is he reading the Word of God? Because something's missing in his life. He'd been to Jerusalem. He's heard that there was one named Jesus uh, 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 who uh, 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 they named the king of the Jews, uh, one who went about doing good, healing the sick, uh, open blind eyes, raising the dead, uh, and one whom uh, they had crucified, uh, and he died. Uh, but yet, three days later, he rose again under his own power, uh, and there was much stirring going on in Jerusalem because uh, this same Jesus had appeared uh, to five hundred people after he rose from the dead uh, and the Jews are doing everything they can to squash the story uh, but it's getting out uh, and it's growing uh, and this fellow's been there no doubt he's heard uh, about Jesus uh, and he's reading in the scriptures uh, do you know how rare it was he had a copy of Isaiah and that day the word of God was not readily available uh, but here he is uh, he's definitely done something to secure a copy of Isaiah and he's reading. Why is he reading? He's seeking something that is missing in his life. Uh, we see he's a dedicated servant. He's desirous of salvation but he's been darkened by sin. Look at verse number 30. Verse number 30 says, And Philip ran thither to him and he heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I except some man should guide me. Can I say that the Bible says the natural man receiveth not the things of the God, neither can he, for they are spiritually discerned. One thing that most people that don't know Christ will tell you, if you ask them to read the Bible, they say, well, I don't understand it. Hmm? And it, it is a difficult book to understand until you come to know the author of the book. Then uh, it makes perfect sense, Brother Ron. I've known men that couldn't even read to get saved, and God taught them to read by the Bible. Mm. Now listen, there are some deep things in the Scriptures. There are some things that are hard. But can I say, when you come to know Jesus, you can't understand them. This man could not understand the Scriptures because uh, his mind's been blinded. He's been darkened by sin. Uh, can I say that's what sin does? Uh, uh, it, it blinds us to the truth. Uh, it will keep us from knowing uh, what thus saith the Lord. Uh, 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 listen, friend, uh, uh, when I was lost, I didn't understand it either. Uh, 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 your mind is blind. The Bible says, uh, lest the glorious light of the gospel should go forth, uh, Satan hath blinded the minds of them uh, that would hear it. Uh, now listen, uh, this man's been blinded by sin. Now, if you're here today and you're not saved, uh, we're not looking down on you. We all used to sit in that seat. We were all born in sin. We were all blinded by sin. Uh, 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 we were sinners by nature. We were sinners by practice. Uh, 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 sin is what we did. Uh, we find he was blinded by sin. But can I say that sin not only will blind us, it beckons to us. Can I say the Bible says there's pleasure in sin for a season? And can I say, you know what sin says to you and I? It says, come try me out. It's fun. Hmm? Uh, and the devil makes it look real fun. But he never shows you the price you got to pay for sin. 
that sin will beckon you. Mm. Can I say no drunk ever became a drunk till he started drinking? No addict ever became a user till he started using. Uh, or whatever vice somebody has. It never took hold on them till they started it. And why did they start? Because somebody made it appealing to them. Sin will blind us, sin will beckon us, but sin will bind us. Mm. There are a lot of people who want to quit, they just can't. I don't know how many people I've talked to over the years say, Preacher, I want to quit drinking, I just can't. Preacher, I want to quit doing this, but I can't. I just feel bound. I know I shouldn't be involved in this, but I'm involved in it. How can I get out of it, Preacher? Well, I've got news for you. There's only one person who can break the chains of sin, and his name is Jesus. Hmm? Now, if you're here today and you're lost, you don't, you don't see what people used to be in here. You see people that are dressed right, that are carrying Bibles, uh, that look nice, that are saying amen, that are shaking their heads, that are singing, that are rejoicing, uh, and you think, uh, boy, look at those people. I could never be that person. Well, what you don't know is they probably were a lot worse than you at one time. Mm. Uh, you see sitting in here are, are some ex-drunks, ex-dope addicts, uh, Ex uh, uh, adulterers, ex carouser arounders, and ex everything else is sitting in here. You say, What happened, Jesus? They met the Master, and He broke their chain of sins, and He changed their life, uh, and they're sitting here today rejoicing because they know what they used to be, but they're not that anymore because of what the Lord done for them. Uh, they know where they used to be headed, but they're not heading there anymore. Uh, they're heading to heaven uh, because Jesus stepped in. Uh, I want to preach with God's help for a few minutes this morning on when a lost sinner meets a loving Savior. When a lost sinner meets a loving Savior. Listen, this eunuch's a good guy. He's just lost. He's a sinner. Hmm? Can I say the Bible says there's none righteous? No, not one. Uh, can I say we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God? Hmm? Can I say every person in here, male or female, young or old, we all meet that qualification, we were sinners. Uh, you said, you said were. Yeah, because those that get saved are no longer sinners in the eyes of God. They're saved. They were a lost sinner, but they met a loving Savior. Now notice some things about this, this eunuch. Notice first of all that he beseeched Philip. He's been to Jerusalem. He's heard about Jesus. He's got a copy of the Word of God. He's reading it. It's making no sense to him. And here comes a man named Philip. Now let me just say, Philip's not there by any accident. Philip is in a great place of revival in Samaria. People are getting saved. God is blessing. God has used Philip, uh, and he's doing a great work there. And all of a sudden, the Lord says, leave this environment and head down to Gaza. When he got down there, he said, see that chariot? Go join yourself. You see, Philip's not there by accident. He's not there by chance. He's there by divine providence. God sent Philip to meet this eunuch. And can I say that you're not here by accident. You're not here by chance. Uh, uh, whether or not you understand it, God has orchestrated something in your life uh, for you to be here today, uh, for you to hear this message today. Uh, and can I say that this eunuch uh, who really wanted some help uh, sees this man, Philip, uh, and he beseeches him. Can I say he, he beseeches him uh, by appealing to him? Look again in verse 31. Uh, he, uh, he said, uh, and he said, how can I accept some man should guide me? And he said, and he desired Philip uh, that he would come up and sit with him. He beseeched Philip by appealing to him, will you come and get in this chariot with me? I need some help. Uh, what he didn't know is God had already sent 
Philip down there to get in that chariot with him. Uh, aren't you glad when God gets to work in? Uh, 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 we find that he beseeches Philip uh, by appealing to him. Then he beseeches Philip uh, by asking him some questions. Look at verse 34. Uh, and the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee of whom speaketh the prophet this, uh, of himself uh, or of some other man? Uh, he had questions, uh, but Philip had the answers. Uh, listen, uh, when I got saved, I had some questions, uh, but the Lord had all the answers. Uh, hey, what a blessing uh, that God is concerned enough about you and I uh, that he'll send somebody that can make uh, light of the Word of God. Uh, we find he beseeches him by appealing, him, appealing to him. He asks him some questions. Uh, have you been asking questions, friend? But then notice, uh, he beseeches Philip by paying attention. Look at verse 35. The Bible says, Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And we find that the eunuch's paying attention now. Now, let me help you with something. The devil never wants you to pay attention when God's trying to speak to your heart. Can I say he'll, he'll put somebody in your way, he'll put some thought in your mind, he'll do everything he can to keep you from paying attention. I promise you before uh, uh, I get done, there'll be babies crying, there'll be somebody blow their nose, there'll be something to try and get your attention off of what I'm trying to say. Hmm? Uh, listen, let me go back and talk to my friend, Brother Adrian. I need to exercise. That's why I'm walking this far, all right? By the way, the lady running the video camera down there in Alabama, she couldn't keep up with me. So anyway, <laughs> listen, I've seen this. Sometimes there'll be somebody who don't want to get right with God. Let's say Miss Nancy. No, let's turn around. Let's say you. Yeah. You don't want to get right with God. But Miss Nancy does. She's listening. She's wanting to pay attention. She's wanting to see what the, what the Bible says and I've seen the devil use somebody who don't want to get right with God try to disrupt the one who does want to get right with God I've seen that you seen that brother Ron I know you've seen that preaching huh huh how you doing Candace good good to see you all right I just disrupted her huh? keep her from paying attention she's gonna think I got in trouble the preacher come all the way back here and shook my hand huh can I say he beseeched Philip he appealed to him to get into the chariot. He began to ask him some questions, and now Philip begins to preach to him, and he's paying attention. Has God got your attention this morning? And can I say this, that he beseeched Philip by acting on what he heard. Look at verse 36. The Bible says, And as they went on their way, they came into a certain water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? Listen, being baptized is a good thing, but baptized, being baptized won't save you. He realized baptism wouldn't save him, Brother Brian, because he said, what doth hinder me from getting baptized? Uh, he's asking questions, uh, he's paying attention, uh, and he's now acting on what he heard. He said, uh, hey, uh, I realize I need to do something in order to make this right. Uh, the Lord's already done everything that it needs to do to save me. Uh, the Lord loves me. The Lord gave himself for me. The Lord sent Philip to come and speak to me. Uh, but I still got another question. What hinders me from uh, being baptized? We see that he beseeches Philip. But notice also the eunuch believes uh, on the Lord Jesus Christ. Look with me in verse 37. Uh, the Bible says, And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, uh, thou mayest. Uh, and he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Uh, can I say salvation is that simple, friend? Uh, you must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, now can I say... Uh, People have made salvation very difficult. Uh, can I say preachers have made salvation difficult? Uh, let me ask you a question. Have you ever heard this statement? You must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and ask him into your heart. Anybody ever heard that? Show me chapter and verse for that. Nowhere does it say you must ask Jesus into your heart. The Bible says this, uh, 
And they uh, uh, said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. Acts 16, 31. Acts 11, 21. Uh, and the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and turned unto the Lord. Can I say? The Bible here says that if you believe it's with all your heart, but it doesn't say to invite Jesus into your heart. Can I say that the Bible says with the heart, Man believeth unto salvation, unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Huh? You believe in your heart what he's saying, you just don't believe in your mind. Everybody believes God in God. Everybody believes in Easter egg Easter egg hunts and go to church and you know it's all about God and uh, even people believe he rose from the dead and people believe he was born in a manger that's why we have Christmas uh, people believe in their head but to believe in your heart uh, means that you realize you can't save yourself and only the Lord can save you you believe that he came that he died that he was buried that he rose again and he did that for you to become your sacrifice uh, and you believe that he's the only way that you can get to heaven uh, and you're willing to put your faith in Jesus when you're willing to believe on the Lord he'll save you hmm? very simple huh man's one messes it all up say so you got to do this got to do that you got to do you just got to believe on the Lord with your heart just put your faith in him and if you're willing to trust him he'll save you and change your life so how you know he changed mine hmm? he beseeched Philip and then he believed he said I believe Jesus Christ is the Lord uh, and he got saved hallelujah here is a lost sinner but he meets a loving savior while he's sitting in a chariot do you know you don't even have to be in church to be saved huh you just got to believe on the Lord uh, notice what happens after he believed there's fruit that he believed he got baptized look in verse number 38 the Bible says and he commanded the chariot to stand still and they uh, went uh, down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they were come up out of the water, can I say, he baptized him. He put him in the water, and he come up out of the water. He didn't sprinkle him. He baptized him. He immersed him in water. Why? Because that's the Bible way. Uh, hey, he got saved, uh, and after he got saved, he wanted to be identified with the Lord Jesus Christ, and he got baptized. What a blessing, huh? Can I say this lost sinner met the loving Savior? And after he got saved and after he followed the Lord in baptism, he was bubbling over. Hmm? Look at verse number 39. The Bible says, And when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more, and he, the eunuch, went on his way rejoicing. He wasn't upset that he got saved. He's rejoicing. He's glad. He's bubbling over. All those questions were answered. He believed on the Lord, and he had joy unspeakable, full of glory working in his soul, huh? I'll never forget the night I got saved. I couldn't wait to tell somebody because I got saved. But notice, the Bible says the Spirit of the Lord caught Philip away, and the eunuch saw him no more. Now, I don't know if that means the Spirit of the Lord spoke to Philip, told him to leave, and he left. And the, and the eunuch never ever saw him again the rest of his life? Or if the Spirit of the Lord just picked him up and carried him out of there? I don't know. But all I know is it wasn't important anymore because the eunuch got what he needed out of Philip. Hmm. He got born again. Huh? Let me ask you a question today. Have you ever been born again? Have you ever been saved by the good grace of God? You see, that's why Jesus came. He came seeking to save that which was lost. Who was lost? All of us. Huh? Have you ever trusted in Christ? Hmm? You see, if you trust in Christ, He'll break the bondage of sin. He'll move into your heart and life, and He'll bless you the rest of your life. Now, here's the deal, Brother Ray. Over there in Acts 11, shake my hand. Oh, okay. Over there in Acts eleven twenty one, 21, it said, And a great number believed and turned unto the Lord. That turning is repentance. They turned from the life that they were living, and they turned to the Lord. Hmm? 
Nowhere in the Bible, Brother Jay, do we find. I won't shake your. Oh, okay. Uh, I'll put it back. All right. Uh, nowhere in the Bible, Brother Phil, do we find that you get saved and you go back to your sin. The Bible says a dog returned to his vomit, a hog will return to the swine. The child of God is not to. We're to live for the Lord. And it evidence that somebody gets saved is their life changes. Hmm? Say, so preacher, I know I'm saved. And they do that while they're living in a hog pen. I do some checking up. All I'm telling you is the Spirit of God living inside of me don't let me live in a hog pen. Hmm? Uh, nobody had to put a gun to my head and said, you've got to come to church today. I didn't have to come. I got to come. Hmm? I had a desire to come. Now listen, I'm worn out. Them people down there in Alabama about preach me to death. Uh, they did. I'm worn out. But that didn't change my desire. I couldn't wait to come to the house of God and see my church family and be around y'all. I couldn't wait to tell you that if you're lost, there's a loving Savior. Who wants to change your life? So how do you know he changed that eunuch's life that day? Changed my life 50 years ago. Changed Brother Donald's life. Just took the baby out about five, six years ago. Huh? He's changed some of these other people's lives in the last year or so. And he wants to change your life. The real question is, will you have your life to be changed? Will you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ? Friend, he loves you. Miss Brittany sang about it. He cares about you. He don't care where you came from. He cares about where he wants to take you. He'll change your life. But you've got to want to be changed. This eunuch wanted to change. He didn't find satisfaction in his job or anything else. There was something missing. Friend, if something's missing in your life, oh, I know one that can change it. One that can fill the void. His name is Jesus. If you're here today and you say, Preacher, I just really don't understand it. I don't know how to be saved. In a moment, we're going to have an invitation. We're going to invite you to come. If you come, we'll get somebody to take a Bible and can answer your questions just like Philip answered this eunuch's questions. They'll help you to where you can understand what it means to be saved. If you're here today and you are saved, you ought to be thankful you're saved. You ought to bless the Lord you're saved. You ought to bless the Lord. The Lord had a Philip in your life that showed you the way of salvation. And you ought to be thankful for that. But you also ought to be hungry to tell somebody else about it. If you're here today and not saved, we invite you to come. Trust the Lord. If you're here and you are saved, maybe you need to come and ask the Lord to give you a burden. Somebody you can tell about Jesus. Maybe the Lord wants to use you as a Philip. I don't know. But let's all stand this morning. Brother Clint, come get a song of invitation. Why they're coming. You need the Lord. Why don't you come? Let us introduce you to him. His folks are coming. They're getting a song. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Have your way in this invitation. Help us now, Lord. Touch that one that's nearest hell. Lord, we'll bless you for it. For it's in Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.